Hello and welcome to Not That This, the pop culture talk show where I interview artists and influencers to find out their fool's gold and hidden gems, those massively popular things that they hate and those unknown or underrated masterpieces that they love. My name's Garen Evans and if you can believe it, my middle name is even harder to pronounce. So, episode three, you can hear the third of the choices for the official Not That This theme music in the background and you can help me choose which of those options will eventually win out. I'll tell you how you can vote on that at the end of the episode. Today I speak to Sarah Hirsch. She's an award-winning poet, a former UK Slam champion, semi-finalist in Europe and third at the World Slam Championships. We met up during the Edinburgh Festival where she was performing in a play called Todd and God. It's a bit of a different kind of interview, a little bit off topic maybe. We don't really talk about pop culture in the sense of movies or video games or whatever. It's more elements of culture, a wider culture, but as I've said before, this podcast is really about getting into the minds of creators, like how they think and how they interact with the world at large. So it was a great chat regardless, fun and funny as well. We met up in a little bar in Edinburgh, so there's a little bit of ambient noise in the background there, but nothing that gets in the way of anything. I really enjoyed this interview and I hope you do too. Here we go. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? How's good. your fringe going? Good. Really tiring. Really tiring. And intense, yeah. but good. Well, you're doing a mad thing, aren't you? You're doing your dissertation at the same time <laughs> as the fringe. I am, because I'm really smart. I thought it was a really good idea, because I'll have loads of spare time when I'm here, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's not like I've got to spend three hours flying and then two hours doing a show, <laughs> and then do the guest spots, and go see my friends doing shows, and, you know, socialise. It's not like a got to do that or anything <laughs> it's not like there's people chasing you down to do podcasts with them either no no uh, not at all <laughs> <laughs> so what you're doing you're you're playing god at the moment i am playing the voice of god mm-hmm. yes yeah, in that, todd and god that's that's inte- is that is that going to tour after the fringe hopefully or? yeah mm-hmm. I, I i don't know the plans but i know there are plans <laughs> okay <laughs> as god i probably should know the plans but i've not yeah, but that seems more not... true to life that God wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah just see what happens. Yeah, 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 free will, yeah, yeah. free will. That's, so. that's exactly it. Yeah, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully, we'll at least definitely do something in London. Um, I'm sure because that's where we're both based. Well, I, I saw you do uh, do some poetry yesterday at Dominic Berry's show. You did. I thought it was great. You're like a, f- a feminist poet, right? Would you describe yeah. yourself as that? Or um, I would describe myself as a feminist. I don't what? know. I'm, yeah, <laughs> like, and then. I'm also a poet. poet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, I know why you're saying that because the collection I'm currently writing is actively feminist. Like, I'm discussing yeah, yeah. feminism and architecture. But yeah, I'd say all my poems are feminist, but I don't necessarily talk about feminism in loads of them. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's good to have a spread. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, I'm not like, I, wouldn't, I don't just talk about one thing. But the, all the ones you heard me do yesterday were about one thing because right. I, the, I themed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I thought they were excellent. I don't I don't watch a lot of poetry, and I don't know why, because I always love it. It's one of those things where I mean, love it when I see it, and then I just think I'm not going to enjoy it. It's yeah. a weird medium, I think. Like that, I think a lot of people say that they don't like poetry. Uh, pardon the pun. It's got quite a bad rap um, <laughs> because of like you know, part of, like the part like the past, <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, no, it's taken it's taking society a while to get that like just like any art form, it's moved on quite a bit from. And I yeah. think we all just we all just get scarred by what we learn in school. Like I hated poetry for ages, or like the poetry I thought was poetry yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really bored at, at school. But actually. It's, yeah, it's the same with you. Once I started realising like, there was this pattern of me going to nights and watching poets and enjoying it. I was like, oh, oh yeah, this is, wait, this is... it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Persist with the poetry. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> Dive in. Are there a lot of... I've not asked anyone yet. I've spoken to a couple of... Like, are there a lot of poetry nights about? Because I find them... I don't see them advertised in places. We're really sly. Yeah, yeah right. there's loads. They're all... I mean, it's still quite underground, to be honest, the whole scene in general. So that's why... I think if you're not plugged into it, you just don't see it. And um, right. as soon as I, like, you know, I found what I thought was the only open mic in London, <laughs> when this was about five years ago or something, six years ago, I went along and it turned out I immediately found that there were hundreds. And because, you, you, yeah, if you're not aware of it, you're just not aware. Like, I bet that yeah. there's a whole scene around, I don't know, people who like to make chairs and then talk about them in public. 
I just saw a chair, so that's why I said that. But like, I bet, like, well, I wouldn't know if there's any I, I events. I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. But do you know what I mean? There's yeah, probably yeah, like yeah. five or six nights in London that are dedicated to people who like chairs. But we just wouldn't know because we don't like chairs that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm speaking, of, you know, from my own experience. I don't know how you feel about chairs. <laughs> but yeah, so poetry's a bit like that. Like, there's loads of nights. I mean, particularly in the big city centres. Some cities, like, there's only one or two. Well, yeah, but yeah. I mean, the comedy scene is, is very similar, yeah. I think. That's great. So uh, you're you're like quite a good poet as well, though, aren't you? Like a like a recognisably good poet. <laughs> well, I mean, like you know, I don't want to brag. <laughs> you've won things. I've won things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're the Been UK quite lucky. champion a few years ago. Yes, yeah. that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was um, that was all quite that all happened quite quickly. I mean, I think because I've got a background in performance, like I trained as an actor, okay. so it. So you've got like, half the skills. Yeah, set, right? I already I already had it. It was just about transferring it to a, a slightly different medium so I think because yeah. everyone was like you know a lot of people anyway at the time were like oh suddenly this person's come from nowhere and is winning this thing and, I, and you've never done it before and I was like well you know I've, I'm quite lucky I've got I've got literally a three year degree in how to you know, stand on and say, say words so right. that has helped that helped a lot I think that put me stood me in good stead anyway and now I'm catching up with the writing training like I've just done a master's in creative writing and education right, so yeah. that you know because I wasn't trained as a writer, but um, yeah. but yeah, I think that definitely helped. And then yeah, just so you've been quite you, lucky. Um, so I found this right. So I, I used to be a stand-up comic, I should say. And I found that the more I started to learn about stuff, for a while, my material got a lot worse because mm-hmm. I was playing with things I just did not understand yet. Yeah, hundred percent. But you've got to do it. You've got to try it. <clears throat> you've got to get worse for a bit, and then and then eventually it starts to click, and then you get better because you yeah. you've tried it you've learned from it you've like also yeah it was the same it was like i was i was seeing all these people doing stuff amazingly well and be like oh let's try maybe i try this maybe i try that and then it's only when i kind of went and really learned what it was that they were doing that yeah i kind of started to improve and then and then you can trade the rule book away and make yeah, it your yeah, own yeah. does that make sense it's like, yeah no absolutely and the rules to break them i guess i don't know yeah, um, yeah i definitely got worse for a, for a while wasn't there <laughs> You're also passing on those skills now. You, you hmm. describe yourself as an educator on uh, sarahhirsch.co.uk. Um, <laughs> nice. <No plug. laughs> like, what's so? What is that like? I mean, are you teaching kids? You going to schools and? Yeah, it's not exclusively kids, but um, right. the majority of the work, I, the facilitation work I do, is with with kids or young people. I have done. I do adult workshops, which I really enjoy. Actually, I've done even like old, like I went into an old age home and did okay. some stuff with like um, elderly people, which was so cool because they have so many stories. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the majority of the stuff I do is with kids and in schools. And the reason, so I did this program called Spoken Word Education Program, right. and the reason it's just slightly different from like poets who just go into schools and do workshops is that it's um, it's bridging the gap between teacher and poet and visiting right. poet. So it's a bit more like I guess a bit more long term or a bit more embedded within the curriculum so it's yeah like for example I just did two years at a school doing two doing two days a week rather than just going in once or for a a bit like I I was like a permanent presence in the English department and it's just using poetry and spoken word as like a tool to kind of develop skills in in you know communication and confidence and creativity and all of those things so yeah that's awesome that's cool right should we should we crack on with it yes um, so Sarah what is your what is your fool's gold what what part of popular culture that everybody else loves do you absolutely hate I really really cannot stand clubbing like I hate it <laughs> so much like not even just like uh, it's not for me like I really just actively I just don't get it <laughs> And like it has, it, I'm 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 really I'm really loath to say this in case I don't get any more bookings because I really value these bookings. But sometimes it extends to music festivals. I have to, and I know that, and that is going to make me really unpopular. But right, what it is is the standing around where there's really loud music. <laughs> yeah, and you just have to move and like for ages I get like one song. I'm like I'm with you, and if it's a good song, if it's a song I really like, I will yeah, dance yeah, yeah. like nobody's business but then it goes on for like hours right yeah. and I, I'm just like what well, I look around I'm like what are all these people thinking because I after one song I just start, I'm like I have to think about something I can't talk to anyone because yeah, yeah, it's too yeah. loud what are they thinking about well they're while well, they're dancing like they must just be so bored right I'm yet to meet someone who's mentioned something from pop culture that I 
where I disagree with it. <laughs> I absolutely, I can't stand clubbing. I used to go to rock clubs when I was younger, and that was about as much as I could because I at least liked the music, mm. you know. But you know, when my friends would drag me down to an Oceana or something. Oh, that's... don't! It's so bad. Like the walls, like especially like back in the day, it was like the wall. It was just smoke. Yeah. And then even now it's like because there's no smoke you can just smell everybody's sweat and yeah. like the walls are gross they're all like dripping <laughs> it's like you can't yeah you can't talk to anybody there's always someone grinding up against you which is a whole other thing but that's yeah, just yeah. disgusting I just yeah I just never understood it and that you know what for me it is as well it's the thing of like the other day was it my I'm going to call him out on this but was it my brother's and <laughs> Him and his, his partner, they started they started getting ready for their night out about half, about half eleven, oh. and I was like, "What?" Like I was, no. and they were like, "Oh, you, do you want to come?" <laughs> and I was like, "Absolutely not, hundred percent no." <laughs> I'm, I've been thinking about bed for a solid forty five minutes. I'm really excited about putting on my pajamas, having a cup of tea, and calling it a night. Oh. And then they get like people go out. Like, oh, I sound so old, I don't know. But you know what the kids are doing these days? They're going out <laughs> They're half ten, <laughs> half eleven at night, and that's early. Yeah. I I do not get it. Like, I, I quite like to stay out late if I'm out with friends. And this is my big bugbear, is that clubs are pretty much always the only place you can go after a yeah. certain point in time. Yeah. You might as well go in, because you can't chat. Like, yeah, exactly. The... Like, yeah, that, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against, you know... <laughs> A nice, quiet drink with friends. I sound so boring. No, but no, you know, go to. I love a good bar. I love yeah. a good bar because you know I enjoy a drink. I enjoy my friends' company. Uh, I like it when there's music playing that's nice and I can talk over it. But it's also there and it's creating a good atmosphere. <laughs> but when it just becomes when it's dark and crowded and you're there to just dance, like I've just, I just, I've never really got it. And yeah, it's like I do. To be fair to music festivals, they do provide something else. You know, they've got yeah. uh, a huge array of different things you can go and do, and it's much more like social, I think, because you can like wander yeah, yeah. over to a band and listen, but then you can wander away and have a chat and lie on the grass, and there's like there's a great atmosphere. So, but I have had similar issues at, at music festivals before yeah. when I've been like, I've had a great day. I've been up since ten, like you know, in the sunshine. <laughs> yeah, I've had a great yeah, day, yeah. and then it gets to like one, two a.m. and I'm ready for bed, and everyone's like. Where should we go and rave now? <laughs> How? Where do people get this energy from? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like a permanently tired human being, <laughs> and I'm absolutely with it. Like I've stopped going to music festivals now. I used to go to End of the Road. Oh, I haven't been to End of the Road, but Quite I've been to Lama Tree, which is on the same site. Yeah, so it used to be really small, and mm. just every year I saw it getting bigger and bigger and bigger until the point where I was like, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. No. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hack it. I can't hack the like the 24 hour. No. Enthusiasm. That's what it is. It's like they're all, they're, you know, and their glitter's always perfect, and they're like, you know, that, and I feel like that is a metaphor for how they're feeling. And I'm like, I don't know. I like, I, like, I make a little nest in my tent, and I really enjoy crawling in there at the end of the. At the end I mean, of the I night. also hate camping, so that's <laughs> another part for me. I, I don't mind camping. I don't like the. Right, I'm going to divulge this, but I'm pretty much always have to go for a wee in the middle of the night, whatever, every single night, right. and when you're camping that is such a faff because you're freezing yeah. and you have to like get out of your sleeping bag you have to put on your wellies and normally it's raining you have to like wade over to a hole <laughs> and like a port oh, oh, yeah. it's so bad it's so grim yeah that's uh, what I don't like about camping I mean that's that's, that's I'm struggling to find pointed questions because <laughs> I just agree with you so much Do you, is, was there like an inciting incident for you was there a moment where you were like oh my god yeah I, yeah. well I think it was twofold so when I was in sixth form there was it was I was very much part of like a I mean everybody was but like this you know clubbing culture and we'd it was that's what we did for fun yeah, I say yeah. fun I wasn't really that into it obviously but <laughs> it was just what I remember like going along with it because I felt like it, it was cool I had to be because otherwise I wasn't yeah, cool yeah, or like yeah. I had this great group of friends that I'm still actually really really good friends with now and so I didn't want to lose them so I just like would go along and I remember like a couple of nights like really specifically like one time we all came up to Edinburgh actually and we, we went to this drum and bass club okay. um, in the city centre I'm aware of the and, word like, of drum and bass <laughs> and I just I remember thinking we're at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival we are at the place where there is the most culture in the world right now, like that we could see anything. We could go and see comedy right now, we could go see a cabaret show or like anything. There's probably millions of shows yeah. going on at this moment. And we are stood in a drum and bass club 
that's like dripping from floor to ceiling. Like, there's no lyrics, so you can't even cling on. Like it's and it's just mindless. Like literally for like four hours of just constant <laughs> dancing. And I remember just being like, this isn't for me. But I didn't feel like I could say. I really, I really. It took me a really long time to feel like I could say, you know what, it's not for me. And it was really recently one of my one of those group of friends turned around to me and was like said something like well, it was at her birthday and we ended up at this slightly busier club bar place and she was like oh, this isn't your thing is it like don't worry if you don't want to stick around and I was like oh that means a lot like it's yeah, okay yeah. that it's not my thing and it doesn't make me uncool it's just you've recognised that that's just yeah, that's no, just that's not nice. really me and that was I thought that was really cool because I think actually it's very service and we can chat about it. it's very funny but I think there are sort of deeper things that go into it aren't there about like you know general like social anxiety or feel like you have to like what everybody else likes and actually yeah, sometimes yeah. people are just different and for some people being in a busy bar is going to bring up stuff that they don't want to deal with maybe. yeah yeah I mean I think I think part of the experience of getting older is learning to like ignore your friends at crucial times yeah. you know just yeah no or it's not you do your thing be, be like my friend Sean who was really super aware like so yeah oh, exactly yeah, yeah. so both right yeah, yeah. so ignore what everybody thinks but also be really like Notice that everybody is different. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And you, you, you learn to, to accept when people don't want to do things. Uh, mm-hmm. But also, you, this is the most crucial human life skill. That's what this podcast is really about. <laughs> uh, no, just learning to say no, I think. Yeah, just, right? Uh, you know, that's, and that's yeah. fine. Oh, it's been such a big learning curve for me. And it's like a, oh, I don't know, it's like a revolution, isn't it? It's like suddenly this word no exists and it's yeah. beautiful and you can use it in all these... It's like your get-out-of-jail-free card. You can use it yeah. in all these situations. And you just yeah. don't have to do things you don't want. It's no. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Yeah. They what? should teach this in schools. I mean, I, I, they probably do. Like, I probably wasn't listening, but like, mm-hmm. it should probably be much more <laughs> embedded, right? When you're younger, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, guys, consent for everything, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, except your homework right now, yeah, but yeah, yeah. that will change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will change, and then yeah. you won't probably... And then won't... you don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I think we're done with clubbing. I'm glad you're on board so with I'm that really one. I'm really on board with you, I can't. Um, <coughs> can't agree more, you've done. Oh. Yes. So, um, so let's go on to something a bit happier, shall we? Yeah. Uh, oh. So your, your hidden gems, what's, what's out there which you feel is flying under the radar a little bit? Right, well, I was having to think about this. I've got one that I don't feel like we need to talk that much about because I don't think there is much to say about it, but I just want to give a quick shout-out to... Okay. Um, uh, I can't look you in the eye when I say this. Parsley. Um, right. Just a quick one. Just okay. cause, so, at one point, I classed it as my favourite food. And I would still... I would still... Yeah, I would still rate it in my top five. And I'm, I, I don't know why. And I don't... And there's not that much even to say, but I just thought I'd give a little shout out parsley is it's just so yummy I just find it so yummy and like no one like any you know when they put it as a little garnish yeah and I get so excited because I get to have everybody's because no one else normally eats it (laughs) and it's like a little burst of sunshine wow yeah I have been known to eat a bowl of parsley that I mean that's (laughs) flat leaf or curly doesn't matter Uh, yeah, there you okay. go. I knew there wasn't much to say about it. I just thought I'd share that. Um, but I've got a more normal thing to talk about. If that's, okay. If that's that's yeah. yeah, I just thought I'd... little just shout a quick out. shout out to Parsley. Love, love a bit of Parsley. I think um, Parsley's doing all right. Yeah, it's yeah. doing all right. Like, yeah. it's pretty fine. Like, it's yeah, quite it's, inoffensive. It's and, popular. Yeah. Think, you know. It's definitely popular as a garnish. <laughs> I just feel like maybe it should be more... Just bowls like, of Parsley. Yeah, like, on, like, menus. on the menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But, right... I wasn't sure whether this is because I feel like it's already like fairly popular for me it's like it's not just oh they're quite nice like I I don't know where I would be in this world without swimming pools swimming pools yeah that's immense alright okay. yeah that's like that's the that's the big one because the swimming so, culture kind of bugs me a little bit oh right here we go here right. we go <laughs> so roll your sleeves up it's it's not it's it's people who swim <laughs> oh good <laughs> even better <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I, this might not be you, right? But I, I'm, I've got asthma, right? So, and as soon as anyone I know who, who likes to swim, you know, they've got the cap and the <laughs> trunks. Or, I mean, everyone's got trunks, I would hope. They will go on about me about the benefits of swimming for asthma and how it's such that it's the best workout because it works out all the muscles. I'm just, I just, yeah, but I've got to get, you know, half naked in a room full of strangers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the thing is, it's so worth it. I mean, right, so for me there's two, like, there's swimming and then there's swimming pools. And I do think they're different. 
so so swimming because I'm kind of so there's things that do annoy I'm not gonna lie there's things that do annoy me about my general swims which is normally other people and they and people can be rude in the pool and they can be like slow yeah, and whatever yeah. and get in the wrong lane and they're all yeah people are like think they're a fast swimmer and they're not just be a wet know what you're what where you fit on the spectrum and just stick to it but anyway yeah. and yeah you've got a, it's quite a faff but I do love a good swim I love a good swim and it is like oh yeah you do feel amazing afterwards and you don't feel like you've done a run or like you know yeah yeah, yeah. but for me swimming pools it's like oh, they just it's, honestly it makes me so happy to look even look at a picture of a swimming pool it's like every yeah everything <laughs> and, and, and I'm really glad I get this chance to finally talk about it because yeah. you know it's a, it's a very personal thing and, and sometimes I feel like you know I'll be like, oh, look at that nice swimming pool. And some of the person would be like, mm. no, no, you don't understand. Looking at that has calmed every ounce of my body. Every atom is suddenly chill. Do, do you get that when you look at, like, lakes and rivers? and? Um, a little bit, but not. it's not the same. <laughs> it needs to be man-made. It needs to be, yeah, it needs to be. <laughs> it, it does make a difference. In it. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I think it's like, and it's normally it's like the shape and the way it's lit and, like... Right. The smell, ah, oh, the smell of a good swimming pool. It is, di- yeah, it's different. I mean, water in general is great. I am a big yeah. fan of it. Um, <laughs> well done, water. You yeah. can stay. And, like, looking at the sea is really nice. I think looking at the sea is really nice. Rivers, not so much. Like, good water feature. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of it. But, but then nothing beats a pool. But yeah. then bad pools, you can fall really low if you have a bad pool, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what's the point? If you're gonna have a pool, because they're really expensive, like I've looked into it. <laughs> if you're gonna have a pool, like don't have a bad pool. Don't have like a, you know what? I really, I'm not a fan of the ones that are like, I don't know, like squiggly shapes. Like just have a straight edged right. yeah, yeah, yeah. pool. Just, <laughs> it's just so much more. It's just so much nicer to look at. You're a pool conformist. You're like. Uh... I am a bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I am a bit. I have, I have been like blown away by some I've seen on the yeah, internet yeah. and like it's got to the point where all of my Facebook adverts now are for interesting pools around the world um, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen this pool it'll blow your mind and like you can get cool shapes but yeah when it's like wiggly ones and then it's like they've not done anything interesting with the light features yeah, or they don't yeah, have like yeah. a nice bit of decking or something <laughs> like well, what's the point I mean, I kind of find, like, shaped pools. Like, you know when you see, like, a rock star and they've got, like, a guitar-shaped oh, pool? Oh, yeah. So tacky. So tacky, and it ruins, like, the... You've got a, like, four million pound house yeah. and you put that on it. Like. Exactly, no. And when it when it just looks like... I don't know, when it just looks like it's there to be practical. Yeah. It's like, it's not. It's there. It's, like, a feature. It's there to to calm me if I, if I go there <laughs> yeah. honestly it's like if I know that there's a pool that you know sometimes when you walk, like especially in London if you're walking through like a tunnel or something you can smell a pool because it'll be like the yeah, vent okay, will be there yeah, yeah. and like, I'll just get happy I'll just be like oh it's really I know that there's a pool on the other side of that wall and that makes me feel really nice <laughs> there must be some way for you to like just yeah. get a little bit of swimming pool water in a there must be right that's <laughs> wear sad, it around though, your neck it? <laughs> also then it's like then it will just the novelty will wear off on it if I yeah, that's true. It needs you to do. be something that, like... Uh, like a happy surprise. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's 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 what I really like in the world. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I think that qualifies as a hidden gem. I mean, like, there's a lot of swimming pools about the place, but I've never heard someone talk so enthusiastically about them. Thank um, you, that means a lot. <laughs> especially just the... Aesthetic, like, do you think it's the tranquility of the water? Like, yeah, the, the, it absolutely the... is, because nothing can ruin a good pool like a... <laughs> Like a baby, baby. <laughs> yeah, or like yeah. someone talking loudly in the echo in it, or like a jacuzzi, and then like there's a couple making out in it, or whatever. Yeah, it's the tranquility of it. I think I just find it really peaceful and really like, like it feels really, like there's look, there's possibility to swim in it. <laughs> to just to, be, to put it really bluntly, yeah. you know, I just really enjoy a good. How do you like, feel about water parks? Yeah, no, not, not no. really. No, not really a fan. Well, I think I think I'd really like. I'd really like it if there was no one else there. <laughs> like, have a wander around. A private water park. Yeah, because then a private water park would be great. So I imagine that would be really nice. Because, yeah, I like looking yes. at water. I like the sound yeah, yeah. of water, like the smell of water. Water does have a smell. Like a water park has a... You know, the Pleasance right. Dome has a bit of a smell of fountain. Right. Yeah, and I like okay. that. Because it makes me... <laughs> vaguely reminds me of swimming pools. Oh, you thought I was normal, didn't you, until this? I mean, you're a performer. Exactly. 
I don't, I don't think any of you guys are normal. Or me. You know, the final poem in my dissertation is about something called... <laughs> is it? Yeah, of course it is. It's, I love that, because, I mean, from your dissertation, that's what you performed yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so have you just got this sort of trend of sort of actively feminist like literature and then this is from Paul's case yeah. yeah that's absolutely I, I was like I knew I wanted it in there yeah I managed to get it in there it's, I, and I, I've made it work like it, okay. it's relevant sort of talking about you know lane systems and and like you know our value isn't absolute so we don't need to measure measure our value like slow and medium but like we can it's kind of using it as a metaphor but then it is also just saying like I re, like pools are great and that's it. Like, it's Fair just, there's not, yeah, that that bit's not like layered or anything. I just just, just really wanted to get it in there because I really like them. I haven't got a parsley poem. You yet. haven't got a parsley yet. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, but there's still there's still time. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. great. Okay, so let's do some uh, just little quick fire questions. Ooh, um, okay. I say quick fire. I mean, I don't think anyone's answered these quickly yet. Uh, feel free to expand. So it's just going to be your favourite and your least favourite bunch of different pop culture mediums basically so okay. TV shows um, oh uh, that's community I think or in terms of what I've watched the most it's going to have to be Friends okay. but I wouldn't that's not my favourite anymore uh, yeah community I really I, big fan? I've gone back to it over and over again yeah big fan okay what, what one do you hate oh well, I don't know because if I don't like something I just won't watch it oh I'm going to be really controversial yeah, I've never watched Game of Thrones, <laughs> and it's because I think I won't like it. But I did do that with Lord of the Rings, and then I watched Lord of the Rings, and I, well, it was fine. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's what I should have had as my thing. That I, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, it was. It was fine. <laughs> nothing. Nothing special. Great. Don't hate me, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, movies favourite movie it's a film called Life is Beautiful and it's um, it's about the Holocaust uh, and it's about this um, Italian Jew who's uh, like a, the actor is like a, is a clown and so he, he turns going to a concentration camp into a game for his four year old son to right. stop him being scared so and it's the most beautiful heartbreaking amazing film I've ever seen I've watched it over and over again and it's just yeah it's incredible wow great yes. your, your least favourite movie not Lord of the Rings that was alright well it's probably just because it's stuck with me for so many years I don't like scary films okay. at all and um, I watched Chucky when I was far too young yeah. and that always stuck with me as like why did I put myself through that it was another it was like yeah, a sleepover yeah. when I was like in year 8 or something and it was one of those things where everyone was doing it and yeah. I remember like I couldn't go into my bathroom at home for like weeks because we had a chest in there and I thought Ch- Chucky was hiding in the chest <laughs> so yeah I don't know that one that's sprung to mind amazing okay so book Favourite book? Ah, that's too hard because there's so many. Oh, there's like Very hundred. few people have kept a one on this answer. Okay, great. I've got a list of about 20. <laughs> no. Okay, what's what's bringing to mind? Time Traveller's Wife, always. Oh, where do we even start? I read this book and it's really stuck with me and I'm about to read his next one. It's called The Truth of the Harry Corbett Affair and it's like 600 pages and it's massive and it's like amazing kind of literary thriller. Okay. Um, anything by Jasper Ford. Right. This is my favourite author. He just writes amazing, like loads of puns, like real page turners, but like full of literary references and jokes and stuff that, yeah, you could read it 15 different ways and like so get, get it. Get, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that is that. And I'm, I mean, I could go on and on and on, okay. um, but we'll stop there. But basically, I'm, I love books. Okay. Poetry books, oh God. You know what? Just books, <laughs> Just all of them. All, all books. Yeah. So, so this question's going to be hard. What's your yes. least favourite book? Oh, okay. That's really hard, isn't it? Cause I mean, you don't even have to have finished it. Is there something you've picked up and gone, oh, God, no, not this? Well, like, no. <laughs> there's Yeah, there's been stuff that I've picked up and... It's normally, like, romancy or, like, not romancy, but, like, you know, like, sort of, what's it called? Chick lit or whatever. If I've accidentally picked up something, it's a bit, like, tacky. Right, be like, yeah. oh, this doesn't have anything else going for it. It's just working on one level. <laughs> but I like a book to okay. to have something going on. But yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, off the top of my head, if a book's rubbish, I'll, I'll put it down and never think about it again. So I imagine it's just they've all just disappeared from my memory. Okay, which, fair enough. Which is a good thing. Yeah, I no, guess. yeah. Band. What's your favourite band? Or singer, songwriter, um, or musical person? Again, that's hard, isn't it? Because it depends on my yeah. mood. But at the moment, 
Cocoa in the Butterfields. Oh, I don't know that. No, I know, and I, nobody does, and they're so... Well, people do, obviously. Don't, yeah, don't yeah, worry, yeah, guys, yeah. if you're listening. <laughs> I know you're a big fan of my work. Uh, no, no, they're, they're quite... Um, they've got, like, a real cult following. Okay. But they're not, like, a big out-there band. But they're just great. They really, like, encapsulate... Their, their lyrics are wicked. Right, like, okay. like and then they're, they're they're kind of there's there's like nine of them or something and they play like everything. Wow. So it's real fun, like folky I mean this rocky. Sounds, this sounds really almost They're great. Like it's really it's like a real mixture between like the the, the lead singer, this woman has this the most amazing voice I've ever heard. It's like really powerful. So sometimes there'll be a song where she just blows you away with like yeah, yeah, this yeah. amazing voice. But then also some of the songs are just like really fun and upbeat and then they yeah. Oh, that that is one gig where I went recently to watch them live and dance the entire night mm. because it's like what you're doing on that stage <laughs> deserves it, it deserves it yeah um, so yeah big fan oh. okay fair enough video games do you <laughs> no <fun>? no <laughs> not even a little bit not I even, can't okay. pretend like I've tried I tried recently and it was like bloody crash bandicoot whatever from oh, which yeah, is what, yeah. what I'd play when I was like nine and um, I can't I can even keep him on the road he was right. going everywhere <coughs> and um, I just I think I've just never understood the point for me the point now is that, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give some of my opinions yes please do so for me video games one it's just fun you don't need an excuse to have fun right if it's oh, just a silly game right but they have the potential I think to be the most affecting art form that we've created wow. because it works in the same way as many other mediums do like it's a visual experience it can tell you a story that they're starting to get games that are made with actual script writers now it's not just Johnny in the office yeah. who's had an idea but also you are an active participant and I have played games now where like there's a game called Heavy Rain where you have to your son gets abducted and you have to find him and it's wow, by a serial weird, killer guy. Um, Jesus. <laughs> and, but he makes you perform tasks. Like he makes... A, um, one point, this is the point which really went, oh, in my head. Uh, you have to cut off your own finger. Oh, my God. And you're in a room and you can choose... There's a bunch of different things you can choose what? to do that with. And so you pick an item to cut your finger off. So oh you can get God. another clue to find your son. And then you press the button to chop your finger off. Except the character stops... And you have to keep hammering the button. You have to make him do it. And that oh active God. participation. There are other ga- games where this is nicer, but this was the first huge moment. You know, it doesn't have to be a horrible thing. But that is incredibly affecting. And that's why I love video games because I yes. don't think there's a medium that can make you participate no, in that way. No, there's not. Other than immersive theatre. <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, no, uh, you're right. And from the comfort of your armchair. Well, it's where it's the where the where the future's going. Like, I feel a bit behind in terms of like, I say the future. We're in it, aren't we? We're in the future. But like, I do feel a bit behind that I've not really got into any of this stuff because I do feel like it's going to take over the world. But can I ta- can I say something else that I really don't like? I've just thought of that um, okay, yeah, yeah. that is that everyone else likes, which is related, which is VR. Uh, I'm with you on VR, even though I love video games. Like, I, I love the potential of VR, but I have no interest in it. I think the potential of it is amazing, <laughs> and I think the technology is incredible. The reason I don't like it is because it makes me really scared. Right. I, okay. I tried VR, there's a video of me trying it somewhere, and it's honestly hilarious because like, I just I freaked out, like, absolutely, like, to the point of like, <laughs> oh, I don't know, I, I, people were worried for me. Like, it's yeah, yeah. so scary because suddenly you're, you're somewhere that you're not and it yeah. surrounds you and you and yeah you're just implicated like I was yeah. like on a roller coaster or I was like there was this dinosaur coming at me and like it's just so real yeah 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 VR not a fan not a fan okay we'll do one last question then someone was going to make the story of your life what medium would it be in and what would you call it wow oh my god that's such a good question <laughs> the story much. of my life I mean, I've not it's, not... it's not that interesting yet. Like, you know... <laughs> hopefully, I'm about a quarter of the way through it. So, uh, it would be... It would be a trailer. Okay. Because it, it hasn't happened fully yet. Uh, so, it would be a trailer. But it would be, like... It would be an animated trailer, I think. And it would be really long. <laughs> because... 
because stuff has been cool and I'm very nostalgic. So I think I think there'd be like eight or nine minutes on like the first ten years of my life. Fine, okay. And then it would speed up and there'd be like a montage sequence or something and then yeah, with like a great backing track. And it would be called That's really difficult, I dunno, like this is always harder for people who work with words. Yeah, because I'm trying to be clever in my head. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh, what rhymes with hush? Something about... Uh. <laughs> That's so hard. You've got me. You've actually got me. It would be called Swimming Pools and Parsley. Swimming Pools and Parsley. Swimming Pools and Parsley. That's quite good. Swimming yeah, Pools and that. Parsley. Part it's, it's one. definitely an indie Part film. one. <laughs> yeah, it's an indie yeah, film. Yeah. Swimming Pools and Parsley, part one. Official trailer, 2017. Copyrights at rehash. Right, okay. Great. That's what it Just in case any in case filmmakers anyone, out there yeah, yeah, yeah. are making that. <laughs> it's a great um, idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, that is great. Thank you very much for joining me, Sarah. Thanks um, for having me. And keep cracking on with the fringe and smashing it. Thanks, you too. Wow, so that was Sarah. I think that was a lovely conversation and the nature of the topics we talked about surprised even me. I'll be honest and say that I never expected to host a podcast that gave a shout out to Parsley, but it was really nice, I think, to get a different kind of insight of of hidden gem, something peaceful and lovely. Although Sarah did choose The Lord of the Rings for her least favourite book, which is the second time that that has happened in three episodes. Like, I'm not going to keep a running tally of these, feel free to do that on your own time if you want, but it's not looking good for old Mr Tolkien there, is it? If you want to find out more about Sarah and her work, head over to sarahirsch.co.uk. There are also links to her social media stuff on there. Okay, so, if you like the podcast and you want to support it, you can do that at thatthispod.com. I'm not looking for advertisers on this podcast because it just doesn't feel right. I don't have a problem with advertising just for this particular project. It just feels a little bit off. So you can go to the website, you can make a one-off donation or a regular one. We've got rewards for that. It all goes to making this podcast the best it can be. It pays for equipment, it lets me devote a bit more time to it and really get out there to find the best guests to talk to. You can also help pick the theme music for this show. Each of the first five episodes has a different song and you can vote on which one you want. I'll then repeat those songs over the next five episodes. There are three ways to vote. Make a donation, review the show on iTunes or share it on social media. If you share on social media, please tag me in at thatthispod. There's a little code I've made up for voting. Just include one of these words in the review, share or comment on your donation. Episodes one or six... Ocelot. Episodes 2 or 7, Tiger. Episode 3 or 8, Thrush. Episodes 4 or 9, Fox. Episodes 5 or 10, Falcon. And I will tally all those up to find the official Not That This theme tune. If you have anything else you'd like to say, please email me at geraint at thatthispod.com. That email address is also on the website. You can also follow the podcast at That This Pod on Twitter and Facebook, and there's a YouTube channel out there as well. In the next episode, I speak to Grace Knight, a scriptwriter who's worked in multiple mediums and is currently working on an entirely VR based movie. And her hidden gem is brilliant, just absolutely brilliant. That's all for now. I'll catch you soon. Hold up. 